All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott, Information Technology Instructor at Rankin Technical College in Wentzville, Missouri. As part of the Rankin Technical College AWD, or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular, the AWD 1111.NET Framework with Web Database class, I've decided to kind of start the class by going over this ASP.NET MVC free course from .NET Odyssey. It is a 12-part series, and I have so far gone through part one, where we did the 35,000-foot view of what's going on, part two, where we began creating our first ASP.NET MVC application, part three, where we discussed views in Razor, part four, where we discussed the layout, part five, where we discussed the model. We are now up to part six, and as it says here, part six is on the entity framework. Notice it is a data access framework. It is Microsoft specific. It'll be used to get data from a database and save the updated data back into a database. So as mentioned here in this chapter, we'll learn how to use the entity framework, how it works, and how to use it for accessing data in our ASP.NET MVC application. So notice what it says. Entity framework is not directly rate related to the ASP.NET MVC or model view controller framework. You can use entity framework with virtually anything you do with C sharp, all right, or with VB.NET for that matter. As it says, ASP.NET MVC is data access methodolo methodology agnostic. In other words, it doesn't care where the data is coming from. All right? It doesn't know where the data is coming from. It means nothing to it. However, Entity Framework is one of the Microsoft frameworks that's kind of recommended that you use with this. All right? Microsoft product used with a Microsoft product. It says you may wonder why we have to go to this when you know when so far what we've been doing has been fine all right and it says what is the problem if we don't have a problem in other words it says what is the purpose of the entity framework and the author says let us take an example of saving employee information to a database and then it shows you the steps. I don't want to sit and read to you, but I will let you look at them yourselves. Notice it's a six-step process, and it can be quite code-intensive. All right, so it says, now let's see how we do this with the entity framework. Well, notice we went from six steps down to three. Well, that's a good thing. In other words, we've cut the amount of steps we have in half. First, we have to create the business objects. Same as, AD, as ADO.net, it says there. Step two, we save the object using a database or a DB context. Step three, well, you notice it's a little bit more complex. All right, this is how you'll end up saving the stuff that's in there. Now, rather than go through all those steps, let's just do this. All right, it says in the background, the entity framework, what it does is it creates a database connection and creates a query for saving your employee object. It then executes the query against the database and fetches the result. As it says, seeing this in, in action should make it clearer. All right, so they want us to start by creating a new um, console application that's going to use the Entity Framework. I believe I've got Visual Studio Express for Windows downloaded and installed on my PC. To my knowledge, I do. Now, I have a couple projects open here. This Razor demo that we used a long time ago. 
and I don't think we need this anymore. Whoops. Okay. And this thing that I made before that was a garbage project. So let's also close that. All right. So now it says, now we read it back at our start page. So they're asking us to come in here again and create a simple console app called EF. All right. File, whoops, file, new, project. We're going to come back up to Visual C Sharp, make this a console app, .NET Framework, dot, dot, .NET Core, on our, our desktop that we're going to call EF. All right. I'm going to click OK. And this is what we get. Hopefully I'm doing it right so far. All right. It says, open the package manager console by selecting tools, NuGet package manager, package manager console. Tools, NuGet package manager, NuGet package manager console. All right, which comes up in the bottom of the screen. It shows you how you, you know, basically what NuGet is, for lack of better words, is it's a collection of libraries that you can add to your application. Now, that, that's a very general definition. All right, PM means I'm in the package manager. So let's continue on. You give the command install package entity framework to install the entity framework package. Now, there's other ways of doing it. And I may have mine installed already. All right. It will download the latest stable entity framework and add it to your package. Install, no space in here, install, minus package, and I believe this is case sensitive, so install, minus package, then a space, entity framework, one word. Now, Typically, when it comes up like this, and I'm not seeing anything in red, it means that it's working. And I've got my, my uh, prompt back, so I believe at least everything's cool. All right, I have created a simple file to represent movie information, movie. This class is a business model that has nothing to do with the entity framework. So created a simple class file. So I'm going to grab this, come back into here, right mouse click, no, sorry, in here, right mouse click on the name of our project and choose add class. We've done this before. It'll be called movie. That's all that's in there right now. All right. And get rid of this. I'm just going to grab everything that's inside here and put it right there. So copy, put it right there. Okay. Now looks a little different from what we had before. Before we had these three fields. We had an integer representing the rank, a title representing the title, a string, and an integer representing the release year. Notice we've added this. For lack of better words, this will be our primary key. It'll be an ID, so each movie will have its own unique ID. Entity Framework, it says there, has DB Context API, Application Program Interface. This allows you to query the database and perform CRUD operations. Remember what CRUD operations are. CRUD 
means create, read, update, and delete. As it says, it also performs object tracking, object optimization, and some other things internally. In order to use this, we have to go and do the following steps. DB context is available in the system.data.entity namespace. So we need to include this. All right. We need to create a class called movie db context, which inherits from db context, okay, so that we can use the methods of this. And then we need to have all the classes, we only have movie, use this. So in other words, I want to grab this, but first I want to create this class, movie db context. So I want to come back, oops, into here right mouse click, choose add class, and again this will be called movie db context. There it is. All right, and we're going to jump back into here. We need this using statement at the top. In fact, let's leave it out and let's just put in this. We should get an error message. In fact, we get a couple. Notice it's where we're using DB. And if I put my mouse over here or over here, but I'll just use the first one, it says we need, do we want to go in and, whoops, do we want to go in and add using system.data.entity? Well, yes, we do. So we can manually put it in, or we can put it in, let the system put it in for us. I'll just put it up here. Notice once we do that, at least one of our errors is gone. Let's highlight the other error here. All right. It says inconsistent accessibility property is less acceptable, accessible than the property movie db context dot movies. Well, it doesn't like something. Pretty obvious. All right. Let's keep keep on in here and see what we get. It says we have set everything in order to use this. We just have to now make it interact, okay, with our database. So let's write a client application that uses this. So in other words, we want to go back into our main And where's that? There it is. So we're going to come in there. I'm going to grab everything that's here. Hopefully we can put it in and not get any errors. All right, a lot of white space in here, so I'm going to get rid of some of it. should have copied in that other curly brace and did not. All right, new movie, rank one, Shawshank Redemption. So as of now, we have only one movie in there, as you can see. All right. It says we are creating a movie object and then calling the add method of DV set which adds the object to the context and marks it as added for that object. Till now, Entity Framework will not interact with the database and everything happens in memory. All right. When you call Save Changes, and remember, we're doing that right there. the Entity Framework will save all unsaved changes to back to the database. At this point, it will insert our object 
all right, which is rank one, title Shawshank Redemption, year 19, whatever it was, 94 or whatever. When you run the application, the movie object should be saved to the database. Well, we can try that. I do want to quickly first go back and make sure. I hope we have no errors in here. So I am going to do a file, save all, and I'm going to try to run it. We may get an error. There we did. Talk on. And it was that same one, inconsistent accessibility. Not sure why we're getting that. See if we can figure that one out. In fact, I am at almost 16 minutes. So I'm going to try to debug this and come back with part two of this presentation for lesson six or part six in just a couple minutes.